Hi guys. I got another video and love you. Okay. So this one, <clears throat> well, kind of a humdinger. What's kind of happening right now? Didn't quite fully understand it. Had to read it, then reread it. And um, yeah. Here we go. So, open your Bibles to 1 Kings, 1 Kings, chapter 1. Now, it says King David was old, advanced in his years, and he put covers on him, and he couldn't get warm. Okay? So, anybody who's a nurse or whatever else knows that the body starts to slow down, Circulation doesn't go so well. Uh, older people get cold a lot, you know, especially hands and toes, um, fingers, because, well, things aren't pumping like they used to be. You're not 20. All right. So he's coming to the end of his appointed time. And how do I know that? Well, if we jump down to 1 Kings chapter 2, give us some context. And it says, Now the days of David drew near that he should die, and he charged Solomon his son, saying, I go the way of all the earth. Now, some translations say, you know, I go the I go to the earth where all men go, right? And I, okay, different translations. But he says, be strong, therefore, and prove yourself a man, or to be a man. Keep the charge of the Lord God, and walk in his ways, keep his statutes, commandments, his judgments, his testimonies, as written in the law of Moses. And that you will prosper in everything you do and everywhere you turn. <clears throat> Sounds conditional, right? Do these, you'll be blessed. Don't do those, you'll be cursed. But the point is, he knew that he was getting close. He's up there in age. And he knew it was, okay, my time is coming. What's the point of this? Well, if you think of our political structure right now, that's happening in uh, America, and what we just went through, uh, since... Um, November, the beginning, and who knows? And now, hey, it's been decided, so now we know. But Ecclesiastes 3, okay? And I know I'm kind of jumping around, but when I'm reading 1 Kings, um, here is this popping in my head. And I'm like, okay. Ecclesiastes, here are limitations. Well, <clears throat> let's go from memory. Why don't I bring up all the scripture references of where it is? Well, it's Ecclesiastes 3. You can look it up. There's a time for war. There's a time for peace. There's a time for love. There's a time for hate. There's nothing new under the sun. What has happened before will happen again. Right? History repeats itself. Mm -hmm. Everything happens twice. Yes. Okay. So now, here I am reading, and we'll go back to 1 Kings 1. Right? And the whole part of this very first chapter, before he talks to Solomon saying, hey, I'm going to die. This is some good advice, and I'm going to tell you what you should do. Um, one of his sons um, decided that I will be king. And this is verse uh, 1 Kings 5. Um, Adonijah. Uh, I'm not going to pronounce all these names because it's hard for me. And I'm probably tearing them up. Right? So I don't want to do disservice to the, to the names. But one of the sons of David... Um, exalted himself, pride, okay, 
and the evil one fell, right? Because of his pride. He wanted to be like the Most High. So here he is, wanting to exalt himself and say, I will be king. And he prepared himself chariots and horsemen and 50 men, 50 men to run before him. Right? And King David didn't know about this. Now it says in verse 6, he was a very good looking, handsome man, right? Um, and he's, I think, the second son um, of his mom, Haggith, yeah, after Absalom. Okay. Now he went to um, a priest. And um, some of the other priests and other, other men to have himself anointed. He was anointing, setting it all up, having the priests um, acknowledge him and the officials, right? But without God's blessing, without David's blessing, blessing who was still the king, right? So while he was still king, David... His son decides he's going to proclaim himself king and gets a priest to do it and go through the whole ceremony and everything else. Now he asked Nathan, another prophet, and the mighty men that belonged to David um, and one of David's bodyguards. said, come join me. And they said, ah, uh, no, uh-uh. Now he says the mighty men. I look at that and going, giants? I don't know, maybe. Military guys? Absolutely. These are soldiers. And they said, we're not. They're turning their back on this guy who's proclaiming himself to be king. It's like, no, 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 no. We're still loyal to David. You check the current affairs, you'll see, okay, how it's kind of playing out right now. So now, the son of David, not Solomon, the other guy, who's exalting himself and said that he'll be king, sacrificed sheep ox, and fatted cattle at the stone of Zoheleth, right? I'm tearing up the names, right? But I look in the, the um, what the name means, like in Hebrew, in Greek, it says serpent. The spring south of Jerusalem in the Kidron Valley, it's called the stone of the serpent. And I'm like, whoa. David's other son is proclaiming himself to be king and to get anointed by a priest without the prophet, without the mighty men of David, the soldiers, and without his personal bodyguard, David's personal bodyguard, right? And he's going to sacrifice Cattle, lamb, ox, at the stone of the serpent. <clears throat> How does this sound right? It doesn't, right? He invited all his brothers, all the king's sons, all the men of Judah, and the king's servants. But he did not invite Nathan the prophet, who stood up to him and said, No, no, this is not from God, right? And um, the mighty men, or the soldiers, right? Or Solomon, his brother. The one who was rightfully heir to the throne didn't invite him. Okay? Now, Nathan went to go talk to Bathsheba, David's wife, the mother of Solomon. He said, hey, this, your brother's claiming himself to be king. David doesn't know this. Solomon doesn't know this. So he tells Bathsheba, go to the king, David, and tell him, why are you allowing your other son to be appointed king when you told me, you promised, hey, my son Solomon will be on the throne, right? So she goes in and asks for an audience to the king, and she goes into the king chamber, and she bowed down to the king and gave him homage, right? And the king said, what is your wish? She said, my lord, you swore by the lord your God to your maidservant, 
saying, Assuredly, Solomon, your son, shall reign after me, and he shall sit on the throne. This is 1 Kings chapter 1, verse 17. 1, 1, 1, 7. Just saying. Uh, for those that know. Okay. And so she says, So now look, Adonijah, the other son, has become king. And now the Lord, the king, you do not know about it. He has sacrificed ox, fatted cattle, cattle, and sheep in abundance, and has invited the sons of the king, the other priest, but not the prophet, Nathan, right? Joab, Joab the commander of the army, but not Solomon, your servant. He has not invited. He's like, you didn't invite my son, right? And as for you, my lord, O king, the eyes of all Israel are on you, that you should tell them who will sit on the throne of my lord, the king, after him. And this is verse 20, right? Do we see a thing happening here? One guy got proud, says, I'm going to appoint myself king. I'm going to get the priest. I'm going to get all these people. I'm going to throw a big party, right? And meanwhile, Solomon, who's supposed to be there, hasn't been anointed yet, and David doesn't know about it. Now David knows, okay? Then her concern also was, otherwise it will happen when my lord the king rests with his fathers, meaning when David, King David dies, that I and my son Solomon will be counted as offenders. They would get thrown in jail and, oh, persecuted, right? Because the other son came to power and he's a king, right? And he doesn't, he didn't invite Solomon to the, his get together or coronation or, you know, inauguration or whatever you call it. Um, and so she's afraid that her and her son will be thrown in prison or, you know, or worse. Just then, as she was talking, this is verse 22, 1 Kings chapter 1, verse 22. And I also kind of noticed, like, well, chapter 1 talks about, you know, Solomon and her mom would be uh, considered outcast offenders, you know, uh, the opposition, whatever. In verse 21, we're in the year 2021. Next one is chapter 22. And then while she was still talking to the king, Nathan the prophet came in. And he said, hey. Um, he bowed down to the king with his face to the ground. And he said, Nathan said, my lord, O king, have you said um, that the other brother, your other son, shall reign after me and sit on the throne? For he has gone down today and has sacrificed ox, fatted cattle, and sheep in abundance, and has invited all the king's sons, the commanders of the armies, the priests, and look, they are eating and drinking before him, saying, Long live the king, Adon, Adon, Adonijah. Uh, anyways, the other brother. Okay? And where are they having this big celebration party, whatever else? At the Stone of the Serpent. But he didn't invite me, your servant, the priest, the other sons, or Solomon. Now, David answered and said, call Bathsheba back in, because she had left the room, Nathan had come in. And she's, so, so she had came to the king's presence and stood before the king, and the king took an oath and said, as the Lord lives, who has redeemed my life from every distress. He's honoring. The first thing he says is, as the Lord lives, because the Lord is the God of the living. He redeemed his life from all distress. This is David, who went up against Goliath, nine foot, whatever, giant kind of guy, with a slingshot and a stone, and his faith and his trust in God, and, yep, okay, every time. Um, just as I swore to you, to the Lord God Israel, saying, Surely Solomon his son shall be king after me, and he shall sit on my throne in my place. I 
certainly will do this day. So that day, right? Same day as the brother said, I'm going to be, oh, uh, and call me king and everybody worship me. And King David says, nope, Solomon. So then what happened is Solomon said he can ride my mule, the king's mule, right? Which, you know, kind of reminds me of the triumphant entry when Jesus came in on a donkey, on a colt. They're not the same, but you know what I mean. Similarities. So now Nathan and the other another priest um, went down to the uh, to the river and anointed Solomon. And they said, Long live King Solomon. And there was a great noise of all the people because they recognized. Solomon, the anointed, the chosen one by God, and King David said, yes, Solomon is the one, because God told him, you know, because David wanted to build a temple to God, but because he had committed adultery and had a man killed so he could sleep and marry his wife, and you can read about it, it's, it's in the book of Samuel, um, you know, God said, nope, your son will do it. So David got all the provisions and, and everything together so Solomon could build it. Um, so they blew a horn, and the people said, long live Solomon. And this is verse 40. And I went, oh gosh, 40, 40 days, 40 nights of the flood. Jesus was tempted 40 days. Um, Moses went up to the mountain for 40 days. There's just so many. 40, 40, 40, 40, 40. Okay. And it's all a matter of time of testing and, and trials and hardship or tribulation. Anyways. Okay. So 1 Kings chapter 1, verse 40. And all the people went after him, and the people played with flutes and rejoiced with a great joy, so that the earth seemed to split with their sound, or shake, or tremble, right? Depending on which translation. This one says split, you know, which I went, well, 40 days, 40 nights, and a split, and uh, some people have done 40 days calculations, and it lands on March 6th, or 3rd, but it's in March. In my last stream, I had that silver written on my hand. But anyways, so they made such a noise that the earth shook or split. I mean, the sound of all these people making so much noise. Now, when the other son had heard this, and all the guests who were with him heard this as they were finishing eating at his slaughtering of the animals and the feast at the rock of the serpent, and he heard the sound of the horn, right? The shofar, the trumpet. He said, why is the city in such a noisy uproar? And while he was speaking, Jonathan, the son of the priest, had come and said, oh, come on in. You are a, a prominent or a good man. You always have good news for me, right? And Jonathan said, uh, no. Our Lord King David has made Solomon the king. What? But I could proclaim myself and I exalted my uh, mm, eh, eh. overruled. The trump card came out. Now, verse 44. Then the king had sent the priest, Nathan, and the prophet, and had Solomon ride on the king's mule. And the priest and Nathan the prophet had anointed him at Gihon, which I think is a river. And all the city rejoiced and the noise. So Solomon sits on the throne of, uh, throne of the kingdom. Moreover, the king's servants had gone to bless the Lord David, saying, May God make the name of Solomon better than your name, and may he make his throne greater than your throne. 
Now Solomon was the richest man forever, the world, right? He also asked for wisdom, not riches or fame, and God gave him the, the fame and the riches along with the wisdom because he didn't ask for money, power. You know, he wanted to go, how make me wise and smart enough so I know how to rule your people with justice and mercy. Okay? And the king bowed himself on bowed his head on his bed. Blessed the Lord, and he said, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, who has given one to sit on my throne this day while my eyes could see it. Right? So then what happened? All the guests at the other brothers' big feast coronation thing, they were afraid. And they rose, and each one of them went his way. They scattered like rats, right? Because they were afraid. It's like, oh, crap. You know, we uh, undermined King David, and now it's King Solomon. And, you know, what's Solomon going to do to us, right? And that's what happened. After all the guests had left, the other brother was afraid of Solomon. So he rose, and he went and took the horns of the altar. And... Um, Solomon was told, and he's like, I'm not letting go, you know, of the horns of the altar at the temp at the uh, at the tent, the tabernacle. He says, not until King Solomon swears to me that he will not put his servant to death with the sword. Because he was afraid he was gonna get killed because what he did was treason. And Solomon says, if he proves himself a worthy man, let not one hair of him shall fall to the earth. But if wickedness is found in him, he shall die. So, yep. Kind of sounds what's being played out in the background, but we don't know. We'll see, you know. So now, when the brother came in front of the King David, uh, King Solomon, on the throne, he fell down before the king, you know, probably begging for mercy, you know, please don't kill me because that's what he said. It's like, you know, don't put your servant to death. What did Solomon say? He said, go to your house. Or another way of, another translation says, go home. Now, who else did we hear recently mm, on uh, the of the first month told everybody, go home? Is this playing out in front of our eyes? Maybe, 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 maybe. You know, so what I noticed was Verse 40, um, that all the people went up after him, and the people played with flutes and rejoiced in a great joy, so the earth seemed to split with their sound, or shook. There was a great earthquake. The earth shook. Uh, great earthquake? Yeah. Uh, did somebody uh, decide to call themselves king? Um, without proper blessing? Did somebody say, go home? And then I went, okay. And this brought me to Revelations. Who was and is and is to come? Well, we know that's Yeshua. Um, that's the Hebrew name. You know, a lot of you guys want to call him Jesus. I went through and I searched through the, the word in the Bible. Every time it says who was and is and is to come, right? So I went to Revelation 17 because it clicked in my head. I went, okay, the kings of the tribulation in the book of Revelation, right? And in 17 verse 8, you know, all those who dwell on the earth will marvel at the beast, um, whose names are not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world, meaning your name, my name is written in the book of life 
before heaven and earth were created. He wrote the book. Okay? And then it says, when they see the beast that was, is not, and yet is. Seven heads on seven mountains, the woman sits. I haven't quite figured that one out. But the next one, which is Revelation 17.10, there were seven kings. Five have fallen. One is. The other has not yet come. And when he comes, he must continue for a short time. And I went, hmm, who's going to have a short time? Didn't Solomon's brother, who exalted himself king, and I'm God anointed, and I'm my coronation, and here's the big party and everything else, and then King David anointed Solomon. And he went, oh crap, I'm in trouble. Right? So then I'm reading this and there's seven kings, right? Five have fallen, you know. And in Revelation 17, 11, 1, 7, 1, 1, the beast that was, that was, and is not, and himself is also the eighth, is of the seventh. It's going to perdition. Now the ten horns are ten kings. Now, I was looking at this, I'm going, okay, I'm doing the, looking at the numbers, there's seven kings, right? And there's also an eighth. But there was, and then was not, and then will be, depending on your translation. So now I'm looking at, okay, we got the number 40. That's a big number through the Bible. That was Ronald Reagan, okay? And then you can go down the list of the different presidents, you know, uh, George Bush, Clinton, uh, George Bush Jr., right? And then uh, Fell Like Lightning, uh, the Hebrew name is Brock. Uh, and then we have DT, right? Which is 44 plus 1. And now we have JB, which is, you know, 44 plus 2. And I'm looking at the numbers going from the number of 40 and 40 days of the flood and looking at our presidents, you know, um, two are no longer with us in this count. But then you think, okay, what comes after, um, you know, you go one, two, three, four, five, um, and then comes six. Well, in Revelation, it talks about seven kings. And then an eighth after it, right? Um, the one who is, who was who, and is not, and will be. Okay? Thinking of, you know, starts with a four and goes one, two, three, four, five, there's six, and then there's seven, you know. So, and it says that the, um, <clears throat> if you go, but, okay, I'm going to read this again. Revelations 7, 10. There are seven kings, five have fallen. And so far we have a two count. If you look at the um, numbers of the prezes, um, one is, one's not, yet to come. And he will come. Okay. There are also seven kings. Five have fallen. One, in it, one is, and the other has not yet come. And when he comes, he must continue a short time. Maybe not filling out a full term, if you know what I mean. Okay? But the one that comes after that short term, that was, and is not, and is himself also the eighth. So, if you're following me, 44 plus 1, then comes 44 plus 2, then 44 plus 3, and then I went, oh, stop there. I've got a 4, which are the four creatures around the throne of 
God, okay, and he divides 7 by 4 and 3. So now I have a 4 and a 4 and a 3, if you follow me, okay? But if you add the 4 and the 3, you will get a 7. Still have the 4, so it goes 4 and 7, okay? You can write that down, 4 and 7, and you'll understand what I'm saying, okay? So, can 4 and 5 become 4 and 7? Maybe, because 4 and 6 only gets to go for a short time. But now it says 4 and 7 also become 4 and 8. Meaning, king for life? Yep. Who knows? But I, I saw this and I went, wow, the whole thing about First Kings and somebody assuming authority, assuming control, assuming the position without the anointing of God and the authority. Now, God says he puts into power who he wants to and he takes out who he wants to. So, can this all be part of the master plan of the master builder, of the master creator? Absolutely. Because in some ways, evil accomplishes a purpose. And what I mean, one of my last dreams, you know, where this woman was handing out out of this really interesting bag, assignments, right? And one of my friends asked, it's like, why was the guy, and you can go see the dream, you know, uh, why was the guy dressed in black in there, right? Waiting for an assignment. Well, um, it says in the Bible that God uses evil for good. You know, what the evil one wants to do for destruction and ruin and everything else, God will change it and turn it into good. What do I mean? Okay, the black guy, uh, the guy with the black suit who had pictures on all the walls, who was so arrogant and proud and sounds so much like this brother, right? He was waiting for his assignment because he has a purpose to fulfill. He gets 42 months to rule. And what I meant, what I mean about God using evil for good, well, the Jews, the Romans, crucified Jesus. The worst horrible way to die. Okay? And God used it as the ultimate victory to have his son die for the atonement of the world. Now, I'm going to do another video, but this one's getting long, and it applies to this last part of this video of why did Jesus have to die, you know, and what was the purpose? Well, he is the way, the truth, and the life. Because of his shed blood, people can go to the Father, but no one goes to the Father except through him, and he gives eternal life. Now, I'd love to go on and keep saying why uh, God used evil for good. That will be the next video. Cliffhanger. Sorry, guys, but it's long. Love you. See you in the next one.